experience, quality, consistency, and the quickest turnaround times in the grading industry, we are proud to partner with SGC Grading. Check them out at www.gosgc.com. Hi, I'm Danny Black. And I'm John Newman. Welcome, Welcome to, to Card, Card Menches. I guess we're starting. Hello. Welcome to a special edition of Card Menches. Uh, you might notice that uh, we're in the same room. And we brought Muhammad Ali with us, too. And John Wayne over in the corner there. Uh, Ruben, yo and shalom. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, well, John's in Baltimore. I uh, am? Yep. And I got out of bed to, to actually uh, hang out and show him around a little bit. I'm not in Kansas anymore. Yeah, same place. Yep, double menched. Sexy man. Well, that's every week, Steve. Good to see you, buddy. Well, I got locked out of my house, so I just came here. To, that's the best, uh, only place I knew to go. So five and a half hours, about. Yeah. And uh, it's the uh, first time for me here in Baltimore, and it's uh, been pretty uh, fun so far. We're not done yet. We got an Orioles game uh, tomorrow. I've never been Obviously, never been to Baltimore. I've never been to Camden Yards, uh, and that ought to be uh, interesting. I don't believe in second favorite teams per, per se, but I, I don't root <laughs> against the Orioles. Uh, so if I had one, I, I'd pick them. Being a Mets fan, do we ever decide what we're talking about tonight? Oh, we can talk about everything. We, we can talk about Old Bay Wings. I can do a. I can do sixty minutes on Old B Old Bay Wings by. by hey, Let's ask the chat room if if you guys have ever had wings, Old Bay wings, Old Bay spice wings. Let us know because they're fantastic. And John tried them for the first time, and he's hooked. I'm hooked. Yeah, I can eat them every day. It's uh, I'm going to be either ordering them or making them back in uh, Syracuse, and uh, they're they're very good. And your wife Laura, uh, I had them at a restaurant, and we had them again today, and they were. They were both good, but uh, hers were, were really, really good. They got a little, hers had a little kick to them, which I liked, a little more than the, the restaurant uh, we went to. So I liked them both, but, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give the home field nod uh, to the missus. Old Spice Wings. Or, old or, Spice Wings. I don't know if you want Old Spice Wings. Yeah, you know, Old Bay. <laughs> yeah. If you ever tasted the odor, even by accident, it's it's not flavorful. Um. Oh, Hello, Barry Barry. Yes, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Got him behind us. No Jackson Holiday. I'm gonna have to cut him. You gotta be you gotta get in the position. Right there. There we go. Um Jackson Holiday was sent down to the miners today. Yeah, I'm not gonna see him tomorrow. That 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 that's the, probably the you know, it, a little bit disappointing, but it's still gonna be cool. They that team's loaded with, with young superstars. We have a guest mentioned the back, Mookie. It's 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 uh Manchelli. Manchelli. <laughs> um so who's old spice wings are that's very funny. Um all right, we were caught up on those. So have any of you actually been to Baltimore well, since we're talking about it? Um otherwise I'll save some of my random descriptions, but Paperman Diner, absolutely we hit that. Hits hit a whole bunch of neighborhoods. Aberdeen minor league game last night. Yeah, which if you like swing and misses and no run scored, that was that was the the game that like it was a lost art of uh, hitting. I felt like I should go out there and play. Like it was, and the, we left in, in what the sixth inning. I think it was zero zero. It wound up being a one nothing game for the the visiting team in the end. But a lot of strikeouts, seventeen strikeouts, one walk. I think. Yeah, not many hits. One hit. Yeah, so uh, if you like a lot of action, it was not your night. Uh, but uh, you know they had happy hours. So we, where can you get a pretzel and a hot dog for seven bucks in Aberdeen? So uh, that was that was fun. And uh, you know I love baseball, so we're, we're you know it, it was still good. And uh, tomorrow, like I said, first time in Camden Yards. Did they give you anything? For, did I get like a shirt? I survived like my first. Game at Camden Yards. And no, they're giving out Brandon Hyde bobbleheads. Yeah. So. Well, I'll give if I get one, I'll, I'll donate that to the kids. Will have to split custody of that, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday, uh, and every other weekend. 
Uh, Roy Hobbs, I grew up in Baltimore. Holy what, smokes. What, area, what area, Roy? What neighborhood? That's awesome. Until what age? I'm in, I'm in the Towson area. Give you a general idea. Um, so we hit a local card shop. We had Bel Air Sports yeah, Cards, Bel Air, which is they're they're local, but I mean they're they're known. They set up at the National. Yep. Uh, I open. You know, I don't open a ton of new stuff anymore. But we opened uh, the new tops. I got a uh, Alec Marsh auto, which I I gave to your kids, and they uh, immediately went on the DL. So you're yes. welcome, Alec Marsh. <laughs> uh, the, the Newman Jinx uh, lives. So whoever I pull the next auto I ever pull out of a pack, you're probably going to be in trouble. My dad went to Milford Mill High School, Roy, right outside uh, the city. I know exactly what you're talking about. I was born in Randallstown, um, so until 40. So, you, yeah, most of your life, you weren't just born in there. You, that's awesome. Barry says, Roy Hobbs, I like your movie. <laughs> yes, we had That's we a actually, great movie. It's that Roy Hobbs in our chat room. Did no, you okay. see the natural? Please tell of me. Of course. All right, you scared, make me nervous. No, I could When it comes to pop culture. The, okay, so I, everything post 1985 pretty much <laughs> doesn't register. You can even see in my house my paintings, John Wayne, all old man stuff. Roy Hobbs, you got young Kim Basinger in that movie. Uh, you know, the Wonder Boy bat like that. That's probably one of my favorite movies, uh, especially in the baseball genre side. So I got to watch it again now, I feel like. It's been a it's been many years. I've seen it more than once, but it's been many years since I've seen it. So. And I'll give a shout-out to my son who had baseball practice today. Oh, yeah. That not, was a highlight. Not exactly uh, Roy Hobbs, but uh, he had a good practice. You want to say who he was working with? Uh, many in the room would probably. Yeah, if you guys remember former major leaguer, uh, it was an all-star, Mike Bordick. Yeah, Mike Bordick. Got to talk to him tonight, which I thought was a pretty neat moment. And, uh, you know, so uh, that was pretty cool. Mookie always coming through. The Natural was directed by Baltimore's own Barry Levinson. Yes. There you go. Uh, it all comes full circle. Who also directed Diner, which is the most underrated movie ever and has some of the best sports conversations in, in the movie. Oakland A's. Yep, that's who we got stuck with. Yeah, I, I've said, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the Yankees <laughs> are coming in uh, after after the A's. Bordick, Bordick is a former University of Maine player. Oh, really? I didn't see yeah. I didn't know that. But uh, nice guy. Uh, worked with uh, Zach, uh, helped him out, knew what he's talking about, obviously being a major league baseball <laughs> player. I coach high school baseball, so we had a funny moment when I talked about why kids, like, take their head out of the box and, and do that kind of stuff. So uh, my wife's about to walk by in the yeah, in the background. So we're we're going to get photos. So everybody say hi to Laura. <laughs> she, no, she, made she made it quietly. She made it quietly. because the camera's facing this way. I thought she was going to trip over the water for sure. Um, very nice name and underrated. Yeah, Barry is my father's name. So my my dad is Barry Newman, uh, which was why I'm John Newman. Uh, random useless trivia. My dad yes. has no middle name. He never got a middle name. So on his birth certificate, it's just Barry Newman. That's it. Say so. somebody was raised correctly. Yep. Hello, Laura. Very nice. Thank you, Barry. After that, stop talking. It's to a mensch wife. name. Barry is a mensch name uh, for those that uh, are scoring. Is Barry is Barry saying that he likes his own name? Well, yeah, yeah. Most I I hope you like your own. I mean, a lot of people probably don't love their name sometimes, or maybe they use a, a middle name when they might legally change their name. Laura wisely exits stage left. <laughs> <laughs> My granddad had no. Yeah, name. I don't know. Maybe there's something from that. Uh, They're free. I don't know. Like, why would you not have a middle name? I told my dad. My dad is still with us. They please, eighty six years old. I'm like, you should just pick one. It's right. not too late. You know what I mean? Like, whatever you want to be, like, be Hector. You know, Barry Hector Newman. It doesn't have a nice ring to it, but it'll just throw people. My off. uncle had an, only an initial for a middle name. Was, oh, that's it. Just like just the A. All right. It was J A. Oh, I got gotcha. you. All right, so what did we do hobby-wise? I said we went to the LCS. We opened some packs. Um, we're going to do a PSA submission tomorrow, hopefully, that we got to get done. We're going to evaluate some cards. 
take John's help on that. Yeah. I got my magnifying I'm pretty glass. Good. He's very I'm, good with that. I've take I've done it for a double digit amount of years. The early John was not. I'm going third person here. Early John was a terrible uh, reviewer of of pre grading uh, cards, but the the older version has kind of honed honed his craft. So I'm I'm usually pretty good. I'm very critical. There's probably stuff I could have said that I I don't. Um, just to be, you know, nines or tens, obviously, is kind of my, uh, you know, it's, unless it's a vintage card, but definitely on the on the modern side. All right, so grading. Who grades and how do you decide what to send in? That's something I definitely want to know because I'm taking advantage of having a second set of eyes. Uh, while, while I didn't here. bring my glasses with me on this trip just, well, to, just to make that very clear. For full disclosure, if you're going to look at cards for grading, Lighted magnifying glass. Do you ever see my glasses? I I wear magnifying glasses. They're they you get them at Walmart. They're like seventeen bucks, and they have a LED light in the middle of them that you is USB charged. I didn't bring them, so they're not. Gonna well, I've them. got I've got a good one, you know, but uh, uh, that's what I use at when I'm at home and and doing that. So I think I posted on social media once or twice. A uh, funny pick with those things on. So and what's the magnifying glass mostly for? surface yeah i look at everything I you look to, at everything but i try to look at everything yeah at 30 times magnification you don't need that for yeah. sure so that just so you know the grading companies will will look at it at 10 times magnification to start with now they can go up if they think they see something and need a better look they can go up but that's kind of their their baseline and and that's directly from uh, the grading uh, card companies themselves. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of the Zion Mag Pro. If you haven't seen it, go to ZionCases.com. Um, big, big fan of that product. Uh, they've made kind of like their own slab, uh, one touch. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, I don't, cool. I don't own any, but uh, I've seen. But them. I will still buy graded slabs. Yeah, I like buying graded slabs more than I like sending them in, to be honest. Um, Ruben says, in the last two weeks, I've submitted to both PSA and SGC. I decided to get the cards graded for potential trades or selling and just card preservation for yeah. PC cards. Great point. There's Dylan. Uh, good evening, Dylan. Dylan. We're talking about people that and how they decide what to grade. What a perfect person to have in the chat room. Dylan, yeah. w w what do you look at first when you evaluate a card? Because I know you take it very seriously. So I'd love to uh, love to know what Dylan's secret is. I know he's the centering king, is what I hear. Um, yeah, centering centering is is one of my first things I, I'll notice. Um, I'll give up a little bit, especially on vintage cards. I'll give a little bit up on corners if it's uh, centered. So yeah, centering to me is probably if I'm ranking them the number one thing I look at. So for me, I'm only speaking for me, obviously. Steven says, you can make your own labels with Zion cases. Mine says PSA 10. Uh, Mookie, I grade with SGC. I grade about 50-50 between PC and cards. I sell uh, to pay for the grading submission. Great idea. Great way yeah, to do it. Yeah, SGC is sponsor of, yep. of matches and yep. Sports Card Nation. And we should mention, since you're here and you've seen, I actually don't talk about it often. I have a lot of sports art. It's something that I, yeah, it's I really cool. I happen to have a background in and have a passion for. Um, and when you're talking about your collectibles and you're talking about your cards, I do have insurance on everything. And you know, want to thank Stadium Insurance for being a sponsor. And uh, if you have a collection, if you you know of any value, Stadium Insurance, just go to their website and check them out. They're fantastic. Um, I know a lot yeah, of people and, that have switched over to them and been happy. I, and I got to say, a lot of people are a little intimidated with the insurance process. They think, man, that's a lot of work. I got to like type every card out in a database. It is nothing at all like that. You actually can make a 10, 20 minute video. I've collected cards for 40 years. I did a video on my inventory, it took 20 minutes. Um, that's it. You don't need to write them all down. You don't need to have them on a flip. You can. I mean, I have my inventory on a flash drive, but not required for the insurance. And in Stadium's case, Danny, they have an app as well that yeah. you can, worst case scenario, file a claim, ask questions, get in contact with them. Um, the one difference, too, with Stadium, uh, 
to sound a little like a commercial because it is kind of, but don't the, the people involved in the stadium are collectors. So they know exactly what the value of these cars are. They're not going to, you know, Geico, State Farm, all state, they're going to do, you know, God forbid you have a claim, they're going to try to give you the lowest amount possible. Or they may try to fight it all together and, and not want to pay you. So just <laughs> keep uh, keep that in mind. And if you do any kind of shipping or receiving of cards of significance, uh, these they cover that as well. So if you're buying cards in auctions or selling platforms or selling cards, they cover to and from your house. It's not just what's in your house. Bottom line, stadium insurance. Um, Steven says, my wife doesn't think I need insurance because she believes what I told her I paid for each card. That's, uh, that's hilarious. Well, she doesn't think you need it, but you still might need it. Just don't tell her you have insurance, too. Uh, talking about grading, um, Dylan says, well, it has to be worth it to send it in, period. If it's a $10 card, I won't send it in. That certainly makes sense. But Dylan, if you're looking at a card, um, what are you looking for specifically? Um, just curious. Um, here's a great question um, from Barry. If you could only collect one player, who would it be? Now, are we talking for value or for PC, Barry? Because I would say Ripken or Kofax, and I know those are chalk, and nobody's surprised by that. Uh, I'm not going to, contrary to popular belief, I'm not going to say Greg Jeffries. <laughs> That's not my pick. I love him. He's still my guy, Greg, but not Greg. You know, I'd have to go with the obvious one, right? Uh, Jackie Robinson. Um, if I had to pick a current player, that's a that's an even that's a tougher question uh, for for me. Um, I'm thinking, you know, a guy I, I kind of uh, buy. Bobby, I'll go with Bobby Wood Jr. Cheers. Yeah, I just get water. I'm like, Cheers. I'm the guest, and I get water, and Danny gets the coke. That's not, I don't know about that one, but home field advantage. Yeah. Uh, I go with Bobby Wood Jr. I, I love that kid, and uh, I think when when his career is over, he's going to be, you know, one of those players that uh, we we still talk about. So uh, that's my modern, my current, and my all time Robinson Wood Jr. Mookie, yes, he does. Yeah, that's it. That's, I'm trying not to mention him again. What's but up? I got to answer the question. What's you up, know? Orlando? Uh, Dylan says he would probably go with. Uh, Mantle or Aaron? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Mantle, Mantle, you know, I'd go with Babe Ruth uh, if I could have one. But uh, Drink Kofax was mentioned. Drink Jackie was mentioned. Yeah, this, well, th- those were setups there. That's not fair. Um, that's why we do this show on well, Friday because most people don't work <laughs> on Saturday so they can get over that hangover if they're playing the drinking game with us. Ryan Sandberg, Hank Aaron. Ruben, are you saying you would collect Orlando or are you saying hello to Orlando? Orlando Cepeda? Right. Maybe he's collecting Orlando Cepeda. Maybe he likes or, who it is. How about Orlando Arcia? That would be that, a different yeah, player. Yeah. That's, how many Orlando? That was much better. Yeah, I know that. How, how about many? Tony Orlando? Well, hey, don't forget Don, who actually wasn't Don. That, that was just what they called him. <laughs> did you know that? I did not. There you go. All right. So it's a full. Full loss this year, Ocardo. Orlando Hudson, he played at Syracuse, by the way, when he was uh, with the Blue Jays. So I actually saw saw him back in the day. There's another Orlando. Saying hello, I'd collect Clemente. Yes, I hope so. Um, Tony Orlando. Yeah, it's a bad joke, Barry. Don't sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Dylan says I want to choose a player that has the most cards ever printed, and that's why I chose Mantle and or Aaron. Uh, most cards ever printed. That you know, it's you, probably a modern day. Player I was about to say, point. Ripken is is up there. Griffey's up there. Jeter's up there. Um, yeah. I love Griffey too. I'm a sucker for yeah. Griffey cards. I'll, I'll eBay search like '90s inserts, Griffey's that are are tougher uh, pulls. Heck, I st- I got 24 1989. Pacific Griffey candy bars at my house. So. Well, you, you do have a lot of minor league stuff also. Yeah. So city of Orlando. That's, yeah. good, that's a good Orlando. Yeah. It's got Disney world. It's a big cases. Yeah, uh, the show's only an hour. So I don't think we're going to name every Orlando t- tonight, but uh, I think we covered the, the big one. I think what's the biggest Orlando. Well, 
as far as player Cepeda. Look at the email I just got. I'm going to share this. If you get the Zion newsletter, I just got an email for the Mad Pro and for the Slab Museum. And I'd like to give a shout out to the Slab Museum. If you haven't heard me say it before, I am involved in that. I'm not going to hide. Uh, check it out. It's awesome in Zion cases. Um, and very proud that email is out. We will be announcing a partnership soon, a little bit of a preview there. Um, Tony Orlando and Dawn. See there? There you go. Ruben. Yeah. But I believe her real name wasn't Dawn. They just, that was for the like, right. stage name. So. Not like George. If you Prince saw out in public, it Allen. said Dawn, she probably wouldn't respond to you. But no. Hodges, hello. El Duque. El Duque. Remember El Duque. Oh, great one. Orlando Good Orlando. one, Nookie. Yeah, I feel like we're missing an I feel like one. they're using Google and we're not. Yeah, we are. <laughs> look, my hands. Look, 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 we're like dealers at the casino. <laughs> there were two that made up Dawn. Yeah, that's what I mean. That They just called them. It was like the band. It's like Casey and the Sunshine Band. It was Tony Orlando, and they were Dawn. But that they obviously have individuals. And neither one of them was a Dawn that I'm aware of. But I'm not a Tony Orlando and Don expert. How about Joe Orlando? Yeah, that one just came in hobby. Via, via text message from yeah. from uh, Rich Klein. Thank you, Rich. Yeah, so glad, glad you're lo- lo- uh, watching or listening. Yeah, Joe Orlando. This is more like a defense table. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely. I will say this. I will say this. I would definitely be the defendant as Danny being half Jewish. Uh, so, I would be the attorney being yeah, told. I'd be like, uh, <laughs> Mr. Newman, they'll say, Mr. Newman, who's representing you in this case? And I'll say, my my lawyer, Danny Black, is will be my representative. I'm, I'm dressed appropriately. Yeah, in black. Um, Orlando Miller played for my Astros. I got to admit, I don't remember. No, I remember him. Yeah, yeah. My kind of show tonight. Uh, that's We take that as a big compliment, Orlando. You know that. Yeah, and they got you got – they got Orlando, another hobby Orlando. There might be as many hobby Orlandos as major league players named Orlando. I love pretty get, close. I love getting it via text. And I'd also like to point out that we're doing this during an Oriole game, yeah, and the NFL draft. And I managed to figure out that the Ravens took a tackle, Rosengarden. So I'm pretty happy. Rosengarden about that. could be, could be. I'm not getting my hopes up. Like, listen, we have like, potential. Talk about serendipity. We have, we have two TVs here, so if you see me do this, I'm watching TV. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, the Steelers already made their pick. Um, they do have another one coming up, but not for a while, probably not while we're on the air. So. We have a whole uh, a whole setup here. It's kind of like a war room, like we're like we're getting next, ready to draft. Next segment, players named Barry. Well, yeah. let's start out with Bonds and Larkin. <laughs> Han or Lando? I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't know how, how we're going to see. Apparently, I've aged to where I can't see, and I got to do this right. to read. So I see you, Hammer. Oh, Han Orlando from Star Wars. Oh, that's why I yeah. didn't get it. Yeah. All right. Once Talk again, to pop culture. Yeah. I Well, it's fooled me for, what, 30 seconds there, too. So, um, you know, we're, I don't know how many football fans we have. Obviously, we're going up against uh, the draft day one was an offensive day. Day two is now defensive day and offensive line day. My Steelers have beefed up the front line, the trenches, right, where football games uh, are, are won. Steven says, I have you on one TV and the Cubs on the other. I just yeah. want to know who gets the volume. <laughs> that's that's the question. Do, are, are we on volume or are you, are you watching us on mute? And if you're watching us on mute, I guess you didn't hear the question, so that was really stupid. I didn't think about that. What? If he's watching on mute, he didn't hear what I asked. It might be better to watch on mute. You get you laugh when you see these ugly mugs, and then you get the entertainment <laughs> of Major League Baseball. Cubs are muted. Thank you. All right. Go Saints. Well, we appreciate it. Um, John, I hope you brought a terrible towel to wave in Baltimore. I tell you, when I was packing my my backpack um, with, with you know three days' worth of clothes, four days' worth of clothes, uh, I really almost put a Steeler item in there, but I'm like, no, out of respect to, to you guys here who are hosting me, my host family, I'm like a foreign exchange uh, kid, but uh, I didn't. I didn't even, I, I was going to pack a Steeler hat, 
but I went with the Syracuse Mets hat uh, in, instead of a, a Steeler hat. So, But if, if you know anything about the Orioles minor leagues, the Aberdeen Ironbirds happen to be these exact colors. colors. Yep, that's funny. So at the game, John looked like a Hummer. Yeah, I fit right in. I looked like I lived here uh, for years, but uh, first time ever. So that's a nice minor league stadium, uh, by the way. Uh, if anyone's ever, never been there, uh, you know. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. You, uh, you don't. You you want to say something? <laughs> Victor made me laugh. Victor says, "Well, this is different." <laughs> Good evening, mentions. Yeah. Victor, that's actually the tagline for the show. Card mentions. Well, you, well you, this is different. <laughs> well, you, yeah, it is different. The show is different, uh, which is kind of what I like about it. Uh, we usually do this kind of at the national, so we're doing this. This is our pre-national. Uh, get uh, get get together. So it's mentions on trial. Yeah, <laughs> order Let me tell you, order in the court. There was a lot of conversations about how to set up for tonight. A little secret: my regular office studio is not as big as it may appear. Do you what? <laughs> I know this thing. Danny got to see this for the first time in person. I, you know, this is one of my favorite uh, pieces. I, I don't. Sometimes I'm like, you know, you never see a rock band wear their own shirt. And I try not to all the time, but this one, uh, this one, that's, yeah, makes the that's not true. Report. No, you don't see, like Van Halen doesn't go on the stage. No, but you it. wear your stuff all the time. Not all the time. A not, lot of the time. Not, not on lives. Maybe at, like, at the National itself, just so if people want to have a conversation or tell me the show sucks, they know where to find me. So, well, that, yeah. you know, so. The hobby is the people. <laughs> um, who would want merch? So anybody out there? We gotta to do some bench merch. Bench merch. We talked about this on the last episode. We definitely gotta do in the bare minimum some stickers. We gotta we gotta steal what Dylan and Adam from Splendid Sports did and do like a dual sided card. They signed them. Very well done. We're gonna have to like pick their brain and like who did that card and uh, you know uh, flattery, right? Uh, what does that say? In uh, <laughs> something uh, copycat is the sincerest form of flattery, or what, whatever that saying is. So we'll have to do a, a dual sided card to sign a couple. I don't know who will want them, uh, but we can have them for for ourselves. But uh, we gotta have some merch, mench or mench merch, mench or, merch, or merch, mench or mench merch. Merch mench is a guy I grew up with. Yeah, nice guy, a short German guy. Um, the question is, did. Uh, John bring Danny his own Sports Card Nation sweatshirt. He did not. He actually uh, brought he, nothing. You have stuff. Though. He brought nothing. You have stuff. Like- He's staying with me. He brought nothing. <laughs> Here's the crazy thing. And he parked in my front yard. I did. Uh, I don't have anything left, like extra stuff. You have everything I've made, you've, you've had. So there's nothing. Like the stickers, posters. Posters, I don't know. I got to get a little more. With the coasters, we're watching. Uh, it looks like the A's are going to try to tie this game up, but uh, that's the lid. Um, coasters, I had some coasters, but then you put drinks on them, they get worn out. But they're, they're, we, I, I think I went too cheap on the coasters. I'll have to make, I'll have to go a, a notch above uh, on coasters. Stickers, I always get, I always have those, and but you have those, so I didn't really bring those. That's right. But, I, I but you have stickers. some Hobby News Daily stickers I that do. I don't have, so if you want to pick on anyone. I'm part of Hobby News Daily, and I don't even have Hobby News Daily stickers. Guilty. All right, let me catch up on these. Uh, Kiss definitely wears Kiss gear. Well, they, yeah, Kiss is the, their own thing. Chris Harris. By the way, where is Kiss from? Brooklyn. They are from Brooklyn, New York, by the way. Drink. Yeah. That, you add that to the, anytime I say Brooklyn, you can add that to the drinking game. And by the way, Darrell Hernandez is up. Former Oriole prospect, uh, and Kimbrel just. I'm not. A, oh, like a, oh, play at the plate. Play at the plate. I'm not a Kimbrel guy. I'm not gonna. Yeah, not right now. Okay, uh, Dylan. Uh, stickers, cards, coasters would be easy and epic. Would they? Would Would you guys really want cards and coasters? Because we will do. We want to do something. We definitely want to do something. Uh, not very menchy, John. No, Mookie. He he brought me nothing. You, I, but you have stuff. You act as if I never gave you anything ever. I just you. If you have I don't, everything, I don't, I don't remember. If you have everything, you don't you don't get somebody something they already have. Unless you threw them out, and then you needed them. Replaced. Barry wants to know what's the, are the two of y'all's biggest disagreement on what 
I guess anything. Uh, probably Steelers, Steelers Ravens. Ravens. Yeah, we're. Yeah. That, I don't think you get. That's one of the biggest yes. rivalries. In yeah. Sport. We we have look. We immediately went to that. Right. There. There's. We overcome that. Yeah, we bucked the trend of being good friends and being a Steeler and a Ravens fan. So, yeah. uh, Ruben says John could have at least brought you a signed cartoon uh, that's in Sports Collectors Digest that looks oh, like my. Kyle Schwarber. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> you might really be representing me when Kyle Schwarber takes me to court court for. Copyright. Hey, you're using a picture of me <laughs> as your logo, Mr. Newman, on your sports card. Oh. It does. I, until he said that, I never even thought about it. Definitely That's doesn't great. look like me. I always say I'm a better-looking cartoon than a real human. Uh, so my, apparently my cartoon looks like the real Kyle Schwarber, which looks better than the real Chad Newman. So it all comes it all comes full circle. That is funny. Every time I look at that logo now, I want to think Carl Schwarber. I don't. I don't hate Carl Schwarber, so it's not terrible. But yeah, it's I can't fun. get that out of my head now. That is hilarious. Ruben, you're winning the chat room so far. And and I only use Chris that. Harris. Give me some free stuff. <laughs> I just want the free stuff. Thoughts on Carl Erskine? Yeah, I think he just passed away. That was uh, really one of the last Brooklyn Dodger guys from the World Series team. Brooklyn, um, you know, Ersk as as he's affectionately called. Uh, in Brooklyn. So uh, rest in peace to uh, Carl uh, Erskine and, and, you know, condolences to the family. And, and I always, I knew he was still alive, obviously, and, until he until passed. Until he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> and he's kind of was that last guy from that group, right? Um, you know, and and uh, so that it, it almost feels like. Well, I mean, that, don't, don't forget, we still, we still have Sandy Koufax. Yeah, Sandy Koufax. I mean, let's, but he kind of. He's more LA Dodger than than Brooklyn Dodger. Like, but I, he played in Brooklyn. But he was he's not, not part of that. Court, yeah, yeah. yeah his he was, were Yeah, he actually was like a five hundred pitcher during his Brooklyn day, and and well, the stadiums were a little different. Yeah, also. yeah. So, and I don't listen. Sandy Koufax one of the greatest pitchers to ever do it, but he's more of an LA Dodger than a Brooklyn Dodger. So, um, I always felt like Ersk was the last guy from that group, and. Uh, you know, but is that true? Is he technically the last one, Barry? I think with, with him passing away, that book's sort of. I guess you could say Sandy Koufax. I'm not going to. Well, just technically, I wonder if he's really. I'm not going to disrespect the last one. Sandy Koufax. But Sandy Koufax wasn't. I don't think you have to look this up. Did, did Sandy get I'm a asking. ring in 1955? You know, so. You know, we're not Googling anything. If somebody uh, looks that up, I'd be curious. Like, if you look at Sandy's 1954 rookie card, there's no stats on the back. And it says no stats. At this time. I don't know if, if Koufax has a ring for 55. He has a ring. He won a World Series. I don't think it was 55. Someone can – we're not Googling it, but if someone could look that up. I don't know if he was on the roster. I could be wrong. I was not alive. Thinking so, of World Series. I was going to say, so those were the thoughts on Carl Erskine. Any any other dead people you guys want commentary on? We're happy to help. Well, I'll, I'll just say this too, man. He was one. He was really a better pitcher than people uh, realize. He was, uh, you know, uh, he didn't make the Hall of Fame, but uh, he, he was a very important cog. There we go. To that Brooklyn. Carfax pitched 12 games in 55. Yeah, did, can, I wonder if he got a ring. That's did enough he to get a ring. In, well, you gotta, don't you got to be on the postseason roster? No. You sure? Yeah. All right. So technically, he might be the last one off the. Off so the fact, uh, if that's the case, if he has a ring, it doesn't mean he was a key player. No, but you know well, he's, he's, he's got the ring. He's the last guy with a fifty-five World Series ring that's that's still with us, and hopefully that remains uh, the case. He looks like he could still throw and sh- probably could still strike. He probably could strike me out. At uh, eighty something years old, Mookie. This is a great question. Thoughts on Carl Weathers? May he rest in peace. Carl Weathers, fantastic actor, uh, played a lot of roles, a lot, a lot of sports movies. Um, you know how good Carl Weathers was in the Rocky play, movies. Did he play in the NFL? Yeah, yeah. He played with the Raiders, um, uh, or as Chris Berman would say, the Raiders. Um, he, he almost rooted for him in the Rocky movies. That's how likable the guy. Like he almost rooted against the loan. Uh, in in the movies, uh, you know, and, and for Apollo Creed. So, Chris Harris, Kofax was on the World Series roster, but did not play. There you go. 
So so he was on the roster. But does he so so he has a ring then? Yeah. All right. So that would make him the last surviving fifty five ring holder, if unless we're missing somebody. Yeah, he didn't actually play in fifty five or fifty six World Series because he was still wild though. Yeah. Now this is interesting. I love stuff like this. Um, my eyes are not good enough. Bob Asp- Aspermonte. Yep, I remember uh, him. I guess I shouldn't have stopped at S. Bob Aspermonte, only living baseball player to have been teammates with both Jackie Robinson and Hank Aaron. Yep, that's as, very cool. Yep, as Johnny Carson would say, did not know that. Did, I not, did know. not know that. Um, that's actually very cool. I got to learn yeah. more about him. He's got to be up there in age too. Then, well, if you yeah. played with both yeah. of them. Yeah, because Jackie was done playing young. Yeah, 50, uh, 50, 55 was uh, fifty six was his last year. You know what? I would love Cliff Clavin random baseball facts if you guys have them. John and I are absolutely suckers for random facts and trivia. So if you have them like that, always throw them in the chat. It doesn't matter what we're talking about; those are fun. Uh, okay, what are we doing tomorrow? What else do you want to see in Baltimore? We got to get crab cakes. Yeah, man, I gotta like you can't come to Baltimore. Uh, everyone tells me you gotta have the crab cakes, right? The the real crab cakes. So that's on the bucket list. Um, Brent says, "I'm sorry, Aspirante. As mm, Permonte. I am so sorry. It was one of the original Astros. Yeah, I remember him vaguely. Like not not a Aspirante expert, but I do I do know who he is. Yeah, I didn't know all that stuff about him, but I knew he was a. This is a great one. Player. Mays, Aaron, and Ruth all started and ended their careers in the oh. same city, but with different teams. Yeah. Speaking of one of those guys just mentioned, that's what we're doing tomorrow. What? Babe Ruth's museum. That is the, that is the plan. How do we forget about that? That is the plan. You know, I, I don't want anybody to see us. No, who cares? It's a private tour. Yeah, we're going to the Babe Ruth Museum. You, you can't come to Baltimore and not go. It's fantastic. Be, be stand in the same room where one of the greatest baseball players was ever born uh, was born in. How cool is that? You know, so um, you know, Cooperstown has parts of the house that Hank Aaron uh, grew up in, but uh, you know, to be in the actual room. Some you don't. Know, how many people get to do that? You know, I, I have said for a long time how much I support the Babe Ruth Museum, so I'm ex- always excited to take people there, and uh, I like giving the tour myself. Yeah, and and Mike, who runs the museum, has been on Sports Car Nation, and he said, "Hey, you ever get to Baltimore, John? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll show you some stuff." So tomorrow's the day where we almost forgot to mention that. I don't know if you forgot about it or I don't know. Uh, we've 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 packed, we've packed a lot into a couple yeah. of years. Um, Chris Harris wants to know if we're going to Fishtown. Uh, not going to make it in, uh, to Fishtown this weekend. I I'm going to have crab to cakes, which is the closest to Fishtown I'm going to get. Ruth Museum would be amazing. It really is, Brent. I don't know where you live, but if you ever get a chance to come to Baltimore. For those who want to live vicariously through other people, which, like I do sometimes, I'll post uh, some pics on social media. Absolutely. Just more than you. It, it'll probably be pick intensive Saturday between going to the game at Camden Yards and going to the Babe Ruth. Uh, and I'll, college, and I'll, uh, I'll be shameless. Go to the website and donate. They need help, um, as all museums do right now. It's it's tough. Um, and if you become a member, it's worthwhile. It's fantastic. Just Google Babe Ruth Museum. Uh, random Cliff Clavin uh, fact. Uh, I saw today. Mark Lemke has the record for the most at bats with never being hit by a pitch. Three thousand six hundred and sixty-four. Mark Lemke, former Brave. I got one word for that. Yes, Pansy. Take one for the team. Stick an elbow out there. He wasn't put good your, enough. They didn't have put, to hit him. Put your no, but you can lean into one mm-hmm. in a crucial shit. That's my point. You don't want him. You don't want him swinging the bat. You want the next guy. So he's got to he's got to lead into one, get on base, and let the next guy hit. When you're Mark Lemke, you don't want to swing the purpose. Put your elbow into it. This was your hats. I don't care. You're crazy. Pansy. Um, Pansy. Crazy. I never met Lemke, but um, single coolest thing to see at the Ruth Museum, vintage card collector. Um, it has changed. They did have the Baltimore uh, News uh, Ruth. Uh, pre rookie card, um, yeah. but uh, that's gone. They do have some other cards from that set that are there, 
Uh, but I'll tell you, some of the coolest stuff they have are his original bats, uh, some of his original home run balls, um, and just stuff from his life that that it's hard to hard to even list. Uh, and Ruben it's makes amazing. a point here. If Lemke was the last out in the 96 World Series, if somehow he could have leaned in, got hit with a pitch, he would have left it to somebody else to maybe not. You, you don't think that out. they would have noticed when he fell you over? Gotta the pitch? You got to sell it. You got to sell it. You got to sell it. I'm not saying you stand out. You stand on the plate. But, you know. Um, all right. Well, Mark Lemke. Sorry. You didn't yeah, who knew pitch. we were talking about Mark Lemke tonight? Not this Well, guy. I worked for the Braves when Lemke was there. I, I liked Lemke. Mark Lemke is from Utica, John. You should go straight <laughs> to his face. I would. I would. He, and then he'd probably want to punch me or actually do punch me. And then uh, I'd say, listen, I'm going to get Carl Schwarber to come and get you. So, um, no, listen, I'm I'm half given, but like that is crazy. Never be hit to never be hit by a pitch. It is. It is like it's the Cal Ripken streak of not getting hit. Uh, Mookie Andy Van Slyke is from that area. Yes, also, he is. yeah, we know that. Uh, another guy. Um, his name's escaping me. Archie. Oh. Didn't last very long in the bigs, but did make it. Archie Gianfranco. Knew that name rang a bell. Remember him? No. Yeah. Gianfranco from uh, uh, Rome. He had a cup of coffee. Actually, a little bit more than that, I think, with the Tigers and Expos, if my memory. Uh, Does anyone out there remember Gianfranco? Because he was from the central New York area. Not not a great Do you know who's the all-time leader in hit-by-pitches? I think it's Don Baylor. It is Don Baylor. Yeah. There you go. That's a there's man. My, there's my Cliff Cliff. Yeah, that's a man that is a team player. Yeah. Who, who invented the high five? Here's the thing. And Don Baylor can hit. The Don, Baylor's, Don Baylor's a threat with the bat even when he wasn't being hit by a pitch. But, like, he just got on base for the next guys. Who invented the high five? Does anybody know that? I it's one of, it's yeah. one of my favorite – Somebody actually the Dodgers. It's the two Dodger guys. Steve Gar- isn't it Garvey and somebody? Dusty Baker. Wasn't it Wood? It was Dusty Steve- Baker. Was it Wood Steve Garvey though? I don't think Steve Garvey is not cool enough to be a high five. I don't know. I know he's running for office, but I don't, yeah. mm. I don't know. Probably should I'm not know. I'm a Garvey hater as a player. He's not a Hall of Famer. What is he? Eleven time All Star? How do you make the All Star eleven times and not make the Hall of Fame? Because it's a fan vote and they had more fans. He's a pretty good ball player, man. Like, and and I don't know. Don't okay, get. We'll, we'll we'll go overtime if we get. We're there. We're, we're literally getting texts about the show as we're on. That's funny. This is just uh, my phone's over there. I didn't want to like have it near me, but Danny obviously uh, didn't care. No, I don't care because I love. Uh, yeah, so Sandy is the only living member of the fifty-five Dodgers. Yeah, he's, the la- he's the last connection to the Brooklyn Dodger era. Right for the most part. I mean, uh, uh, I don't think that's true. What? Which which part, Dylan? Because uh, I think Dusty Baker did. Oh, we have Archie Chianfranco. Was the, the Archie Chianfranco was Chris Harris says was the last card I needed for the 1992 uh, Ultra set. Yeah, Archie. He's a local kid, I believe. Don't quote me. He's back in the area in Rome or New Hartford area. And he's the co- high school varsity baseball coach, or he was. I don't. Know I'm just gonna that. say that's wrong and give no other commentary. What Jim Abbott? What for the high five? It was a horrible high five. What tragedy struck? I thought it was the other guy on the team. Well, he had to high five somebody. So there was I'm two sorry. people. There is a debate of where the high five started. That it didn't even start necessarily in baseball. That it happened somewhere. You're around. ruining my story. Oh, Dusty I'm, Baker invented the high five. No, uh, Glenn Burke. Mike Burke? Glenn Burke. No, Glenn, Glenn Burke, Burke uh, which is if you ask. I thought Glenn Burke. If you ask Kevin J. Right. He says it's Glenn Burke, and he's got a whole story. So All right. So Dusty Baker and Glenn Burke, did they high-five each other? Is this the whole thing? Uh, Mookie has the answer. I thought my Little League coach invented the slap on the you-know-what, the butts. I ha- which- I'm not exaggerating. I had a youth soccer coach. That lined us up against the wall. We were sitting there, and he kicked in between our heads. So it just kicked between every head to get our attention at halftime. So he missed. It's on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was not a good coach. Um, yes, it takes two to high five. They can share custody. That's, that's yeah. very true. 
Uh, <laughs> that's true. It does take two. Uh, Bob, Bob Bass wrote a song about it. I, I know you probably don't know that one. It takes two yeah. to make a thing go right. Yeah. Oh wow, that surprised me. I didn't think you were gonna I didn't think you were gonna get that uh pop culture reference. Huey Jennings does a high five on some cards. Great fact, Orlando. Uh, and I'm a Huey Jennings fan. I have uh actually I had some of his uh strip cards. Um which ones does he have the high five? I'd be curious. Um here you go. High five origins things that make you go, hmm. Yeah, no one really knows, right? How do we know two kids in Dubuque, Iowa were wrestling off their bunk beds and got excited and, and you know, I mean we don't really know. The T two oh six Huey Jennings. I want to check that out. If somebody has an image of that, I would love to see that high five. That will that I will take that. Was it an air five? Like there's no one else. You just right. I mean, maybe he was just swatting a fly or something. Uh here we go. Hammer 44, which is, this might be heavy, Jay. I got yeah, it. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Yeah. On October 2nd, 1977, after Baker hit his 30th home run on the last day of the season. Well, there you go. But I, Jay, yeah. Jay, I'm curious about the Huey Jennings. Do you have any comment on that? No, um, I don't know. But I, how do we know, like, two kids in, like I said, in some small town didn't do it? How do we know it didn't even happen by accident? You know, so I don't know. Adam and Eve, that one's funny. Adam and Eve, uh, probably high five, right at, at right after. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, oh, right at first. I don't think it wound up many high fives later on, but um, they probably, you know, when they were tempted to do some R- stuff, R- they were supposed to like good job. Ruben, I expect more of you. <laughs> Biblical high fives on on the next. Well, episode. he did. Three finger brown, kind of like a high yeah. three. <laughs> Mordecai. <laughs> yeah. Mordecai, in case you're wondering. Um, yeah, there's probably Neanderthals high fiving in cave drawing. <laughs> yeah. You Come know, on. Napoleon probably conquered a country and in a moment of glory high five. So, how about the fist pump? That one's different. That one probably took many. That one, that one I think, is more like came later. But high five, just, hey, man, good job. Just kind of happens. <laughs> I'm sure two cavemen slapped high five once after taking down a saber toothed tiger. Yeah, maybe the dinosaur itself. How about a T Rex high five another kid? Yeah, with a little yeah. I don't think they can we'll, high five with the little We'll split that brontosaurus in the last uh, week. Good job. This yeah. is why we don't live in the same city, by the way. Yeah, guys. this would probably be thinking yes. bad when we're, we're not, not doing a dinosaur. Arms. We're doing like, I, it's uh, a great opportunity to do my Barney impression, but I'm not going to. Mordecai mentioned night. That's a great call, Barry. Yes. T Rex high too. See, there we go. Um <laughs> screen grab that T Rex role play for sticker art. <laughs> no, that will not we, make we, the we, merch. We've already turned him yeah. into Kyle Schwarber. Yeah. Now yeah. we don't need to no, do the that. will not make the merch uh list uh, there. I can I now I'll never unsee that. And I think I only use that logo in the SCD. Kyle Schwarber. Yeah, now I might have to send it to SCD like a different logo, like my my one I use. I think you should just say that you're Kyle Schwarber on your. Uh... Yeah. I, how about I have Kyle Schwarber on and give him a sticker? It's, I bet if you gave a sticker to Kyle Schwarber of the yeah. cartoon logo and said I've made this for you, <laughs> yeah. he would say thank you. Yeah, and he man, would believe he'd it. Probably like it, and then sign it, and then give it back right. to me. I got to get that signed by Carl Schwarber. So if anyone knows Carl Schwarber, let me know. We'll get that sticker. I might have to TTM him the sticker to have him sign it and send it back. Right, this is serious. This is a uh, – I think it's on a pre-war 1922 American Caramel uh, Jennings. Orlando, I am going to look that up. Um, that that would be fascinating if we found the high five in I should be the home run derby. What, what I should be is the pitcher – and Jason Veritek should be in the home run there. <laughs> that that would be that would be better. Can anyone make background Cassius Clay smile? <laughs> oh, no, he's serious. He's like yeah. he's business. Uh, my copy came in the mail today, and I giggle every time I see that logo. Ruben, shout out for having a paper copy. And listen, I'm glad I'm glad Ruben just laughs at the logo. People laugh at the real thing, and then I feel terrible. Well, he doesn't read the article, so you know. Yeah, well, it can't all be good. Got um, some bad ones. In and there. by the way, here, well, he's in a fighting pose. 
I mean, you know, he's serious in the ring here. If you can't see, he's not just standing there. He's yeah. He's, when I designed that, I actually didn't do that. I was, prof- I was talking about cash. No, I know, but that that sticker, I was professionally done by a graphic artist, and I think I liked it because I think they knocked fifty pounds off of me. So that's how. That's how they I got like you it. to like it. I approved it. I'm they like, did yeah, the skinny body, the big head. Uh, yeah, I'm like, that's the one. We'll go with that. Oh, so, that's hilarious. All right, we're at 55 minutes already. Oh, my goodness. Time flies when you're playing an away game. And and we're sober. We are sober. I am you am sober. I, I might have one drink when I'm doing the show, but not tonight. Uh, you have oh, I'm about my average caffeine Mexican Coke. Lunch. I'm proud of myself. On this trip, I've drank very little soda. So, uh, so you know, that's a, that's a, that's a positive. But, uh, yeah, Old Bay Wings, uh, if you never had them, you gotta have we didn't even drink. discuss socks yet. You know, Steven, we're just having a party here. I'm in my socks. I'm in my socks and shoes. I wear boomba, bombas, boombas, whatever you want to bomb, bombas, they call. You know, my friend started that company. Is that true? That is true. And why I've been buying them, I could probably get you. Probably get them. No. It goes that you like every pair you buy, them. every pair you go buy, you buy. They someone, donate. Yeah, yeah, so that's a good thing. Yeah, it is. Good evening, Mr. Oil. How are you doing? Yeah, I, we we did a, a Cooperstown hangout a couple of years ago. I have to do that again with one mark. That was that was a fun. I did, Heavy J was there uh, for that trip as well. That was a that was a fun trip. What would it take to see you both a little drunk? Alcohol. Yeah, that's that's the, that's, that's the trick. Yeah, yep. I tell you what, the Crown makes a blackberry now, but it's super hard to find. Uh, so I'm going to look for it tomorrow. We got to stop at a in Syracuse. They they're not getting them, but I think maybe in Baltimore being a bigger city. Yeah, I'm gonna good. I'm gonna put in here, not to make this about this. But that's my drink. I like that. I like that. I like Crown. Uh, Crown is Crown is my like you know what I usually. Do. Uh, big Boston show tomorrow. Junk wax hero might come down. You got him out of the house. Good job, Mark Hoyle. Mench has gone wild. Video. Yeah, you don't want to see that video. It, it doesn't exist, but if it did, you still don't want to see it. Danny, I expect more from you, and I even rolled my eyes at the TV. For the Captain and Coke? What's wrong with the Captain and Coke? I like it. Nothing wrong that's, a, that's a solid drink. Yeah, I'm a crowd guy, like I said, but I, I won't throw Captain out either. Ruben, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand by my Captain and Coke. It's a junk wax hero doppelganger. Who is? Somebody called me that on a video. I could look so nothing like look- him. No, I don't. No way. Nothing like him. No, I, I, I once. This is a long story. I'm not going to do it. I think I did it on one of my old episodes. <coughs> uh, I went to a Yankee game and David Wells was on the DL, and someone thought I was David Wells. A kid did, and I had a 20 minute conversation with this young man. He made me take out my license to show him that I wasn't David Wells. When I showed him my license. He goes, well, David Wells can get a fake license, so we wouldn't think he's David Wells. So even that didn't work with the. With That's like the, the commercial where they say, <laughs> prove you're not a robot. Yeah. Well, uh, he thought I was yeah. David Wells. You're not David Wells. And you look as much like David Wells as I do. I like, have a little bit like of yeah. especially then. I was obviously younger. Um, and it was, he's, he's a tall, big guy. I had my facial hair. I mean, there was a resemblance. I'm not saying I look like David Wells, but I, I, I could see it a little bit. Um, so this kid was sure I was David Wells. And I'm still getting text about the high five final day of the 77 series. Yep, I think we have that. I like the delay, though. <laughs> I remember when you pitched it. Yeah, that was my finest. David Wells doppelganger. Nice. We talked about this yesterday at the, at the game. I did throw a one-hitter at a minor league stadium in high school. That's the closest to David Wells I'll probably ever be. So. How about David Wells pitching the game in the Babe Ruth original game use hat? That's nuts. Now, is that a true collector, lover of the history of sports, or is that disrespecting memorabilia? Yeah, I, I didn't like it. I remember when that You think happened. it's disrespecting memorabilia? I don't know if it's disrespecting. I just don't think you do that. Like, what's the point of that? Like, you want to wear that in your bedroom, in your tidy – like, I, I don't know. I just didn't think – you know, so I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I didn't, I, I, I wasn't mad. I just didn't like, it. I didn't think it was a good idea. So 
So, but he owns it, right? He can do whatever. But baseball fined him, if I remember, and then because it wasn't part of the official yeah. uniform. No, so he got. We paid the price for it, like, and he paid the price for the hat. Yeah, yeah sure did. I think it was twenty five thousand dollars at the time. What was higher, the fine or what the hat cost to own? Oh, that's a good question. Muhammad Ali never threw a no hitter. Yeah, but he came close on some. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know what's my name, uh, uh, Sonny Liston. Um, all right, we're heading into overtime. Anybody? Well, it is fun when we get to do this uh, in person. You know, it is. So. It's weird because usually I just click off and I don't have to see. It. Yeah, that would like do post game without being on on the air. Do you ever play at Breaker Stadium in Albany? No, no, a little too far. Um, I played uh, at Old MacArthur Stadium in Syracuse, where I just realized this. Excuse me. Get ready to drink. Jackie Robinson played at MacArthur Stadium, and John Newman played at MacArthur Stadium. Different years, of course, but we both played in the same stadium. Did not realize that until years later, but that that is true. He came through as a member of the Montreal uh, Ball Club. They played at uh, Syracuse. So, What about? By the way, MacArthur Stadium doesn't exist no more. They tore it down. Follow up question. No, nope, never, never that far. Um, I played most of them. I played my most of my baseball in three areas. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, was where I almost went to the Little League World Series. That didn't happen. Thank you, Jason Baratek. Uh, the Syracuse area uh, in high school, and as a younger man, uh, younger kid in in Brooklyn, New York. So those were the those were the three areas. Um, the only like stadiums I I played in, i in Fort Lauderdale. I played in some of the ballparks um, when I played on a travel team in Florida. The stadiums they use for spring training, I played some games there. Um, never, but in Syracuse, I played in Old MacArthur Stadium. So John so, played in cooler stadiums as a player, but I got to play catch on the field at Turner Field. Yeah, that's cool. Which is the best I got. Yeah, I've never played on a major league. I didn't uh, play game. I just got yeah. to play catch. So. I've never played – well, if you, I don't know what you consider like spring training field. I mean, it's major league teams play there, but I, that's, that's like you go to like a minor league, yeah, which is what they are when uh, spring Sometimes, training. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, Ruben says now that Danny chugged his coke, he's going to throw his jersey to John like Mean Joe Green. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a, funny you should mention that commercial. If you've ever wondered why John Newman, who is not from Pittsburgh, is a Steelers fan. It's that commercial. That's the reason. Because that kid tonight is evidently John Doppelganger night, and that kid at the time. So if you see, like you. yeah, I have to post a pic on my social media. That kid and me are the same age. Like when that commercial came out, we were the same age. And if you saw a picture of me at that time, I was in New York City, obviously. Um, we have a resemblance. So I saw kind of when that commercial aired. I kind of saw myself in that kid, became a Steeler fan, a Mean Joe Green fan, took a lot of abuse from all my New York City uh, friends who, like, how, you know, they're like, Newman, how do you, how are you a Steeler fan? This is New York. You got to like the Giants or, or the Jets. And I'm like, no, I don't like the Giants or the Jets. I don't like Richard Todd and Joe Pisarczyk. So uh, that's, I've never wavered. So, I've been a Steeler fan since, what, 78, 79, when that commercial aired. And I'm taking college courses, and one of the assignments was to pick your favorite commercial and do kind of a a, a presentation on it. And, of course, I picked the Mean Joke a Green commercial, which, being most of the kids in that class are 18 years old to 22, none of them probably know, knew what the heck that commercial was. Do you know that the toothbrush was invented in Pittsburgh? No. Otherwise, they'd call it the teeth brush. Well, see, I'm not from Pittsburgh, so I don't take too much personal offense to that. I just like the, I just like the Steelers. We need to pick up the Orlando pace. Another good Orlando, and we're in overtime, so we can go whatever pace we want. Uh, Mark Hoyle, where did you play college ball? I did not know that. I apologize if I uh, should have known that, but that's very cool. You see, he played at both stadiums, at both minor league stadiums, college ball. Yeah, that's cool. 
Um, Ruben says John wanted to be part of a winning organization. I'm not, listen, unlike those in New York and New Jersey, yeah, the Orioles just the up. Orioles just lost an extra innings. Um, truth be told, I'm not going to lie. The fact that the, you know they had a couple of Super Bowl uh, under their belt at that time, you know, you got to remember, I'm seven years old, guys. Um, I think when you're seven, you can get away with that more than if you're 14, 16, 17, or or, or older. So. Um, you know, I, I can't apply. I, I listen. I also stayed with him through the '80s, and if you remember the '80s Steelers, that was a really, really bad decade, and I didn't jump ship. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll say that for myself. <laughs> Steven says I played in several pro stadiums on Xbox. Hey, uh, you know, create a player, right? You know, um, Mark played at Southern Vermont College. Very, co- very cool, uh, Mark. Yeah, but did you give up a home run to Jason Veritek? No, that's how he made it to college ball. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, very cool. You well, know, Jason Veritek became a hero for at, his favorite team. At Georgia Tech. Well, no, Mark's a Red Sox guy. So. I know. But, you know, you made a career out of it for Jason Veritek. Yeah. yeah. I mean, without John, he made it, never made it to the Red no, Sox. He was, he's doing fine without me, too. So he played. Jason Veritek played in a Little League World Series. You're welcome, Jason. He didn't win it. But he won a college World Series at Georgia Tech and won a, a major league World Series with the Red Sox. So. Good for Jason Veritek. Yeah. Uh, John, I'll bring you a special terrible towel at the National. Ruben, there, there's no need to get to get nasty. Yeah, I, I've got a whole collection. There's, of them. there's no no need to 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 use that. I should have brought a terrible towel with me. That would have been. Fun. We have toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, anything else you want to add tonight? No, this has been fun. You know, we've got tomorrow is, is my last really full day here as I uh, head back on, on Sunday. But, you know, we, we probably should do this uh, every year. I'd say come to Syracuse, but there's not as much cool stuff in Syracuse as there is in Baltimore. If I go to Syracuse, I can go to Applebee's. Or John can come to Baltimore and we can do fun stuff. So he should send Veritek a hoodie. Yeah, He should send me a hoodie. Yeah, I'm not a Red Sox guy, but. I'm a sports fan that's never been to an MLB, NHL, NBA, or NFL game. That I don't think you I, don't, that's that, okay. Yeah, that is okay. And I don't think that's as uncommon as you think. I think there's a lot of people um, that could could say that. I, so here's my deal. I have been, but I'm a huge New York Rangers fan. I've never been to a New York Rangers game, and my mother. Uh, years ago, lived around the corner from Madison Square Garden. So I've been to Madison Square Garden, but just inside, never to an event. I've been in the building, just walking through, but never, never to a game. So, Heavy J, thanks, guys. This was a good change of pace. It it was, I think, for us as well. Yeah, it was uh, fun. Mark, uh, the college baseball legend. Uh, see you. Have a great weekend. Mark Hoyle, I got to tell you, when I'm done talking about your uh, college career, they're going to put you in the Hall of Fame. Well, I'm, I like making up stories. Well, um, I didn't give up a home run to Mark Hoyle. Can you guys oh, high five uh, at the end of the show? <laughs> <laughs> we'll invent it. We'll yeah. invent the high five in 2024. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Well, it is every other Friday with Menches. Uh, a blast. Yeah, we say it all the time. Best chat room around. It is the best. It is the best. I'll, I'll say it next to you. I say it when I'm not. Uh, it is the best chat room uh, to me, in my opinion, and uh, always fun. Uh, I think we have as much fun with the chat room. Hopefully, you know they do as well. So, uh, you know, next time we do this, I'll be I'll be back upstairs at my house, and I'll be back in my unless I, unless you can just I can live here, and I'll just call my wife and tell her I'm not coming home. She called me and already made the offer. <laughs> I'm not shot. <laughs> I'm like, what did I get traded for? Like a player to be named later? later? Right. <laughs> and if it's pending a physical, the trade will not right. go through. <laughs> Ruben says, this was awesome. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, five strive. High five strive. Thank you, Barry. We, we'll high five off camera. Just take our word for it. There will be a, it'll, it'll be a high five. All right. Say goodnight, John. Good night, Chad. Do we have out music?